I suggest people avoid layering dopamine. You know, you have one dopamine system that fortunately can be activated by a lot of different things. So for instance, I love the feeling of being completely rested, going into the gym, or going for a run mid-morning after a cup of coffee, hydrating well, using the bathroom, listening to my favorite music on a sunny day. But that's a lot of things layering in for dopamine. And what happens is that if that becomes your hope and expectation, fine. But if that becomes your requirement for actually having a great run or workout, you're in trouble because the next time you're, it's not gonna be that exciting and you're not gonna be that motivated. You actually won't perform as well. So this year, what I've been doing is every third or fourth workout or so, I think kind of randomly, I leave my phone in the car. I don't use any music and I don't allow myself any kind of pre-workout stimulant. So I have to generate all the force and energy and everything I'm gonna do from internal processes. And you might say, well, that's kind of masochistic. Why would you do that? It's supposed to be fun. Well, I'll tell you, when the next time when you bring your headphones and you're listening to music, you feel like a god in there. What, the, why? Because you are secreting so much more dopamine, so much more noradrenaline, so much more effective at performance. But then the next time you have to throttle it back. And so I'm excited by all the tools that are out there, all the, you know, I, there's all this like, cognitive enhancement stuff and people are in, you know, plugging into every device and they're trying to figure out, do I have white noise in the background or metronomes and all that stuff. But it's good to not layer in too many things. Um, there are other examples of this where um, are a little more um, unfortunate. Uh, pornography is a really good example. There's a huge issue now, right? Because pornography is so much more readily available on the internet. Now let's just remove the kind of um, the moral uh, judgments about it, right? Because that's not what this is about. A scientific discussion about this would say that there's an enormous availability and range of imagery that's very powerful that feeds directly into the dopamine system. And a lot of people, young people who are growing up watching a lot of intense pornography are suffering from a lot of sexual side effects and uh, struggles with sexual interactions in real life because those interactions are not as intense as the things that they're seeing. The other thing that's happening to just mention is that I have colleagues that work on this in psychiatry that, that they are wiring their nervous systems to become aroused viewing other people having sex as opposed to them having it. And so they're running into a lot of trouble there. So you, what, what's happening Super is that dopamine levels are so high that real life, it's like, it's like eating extremely palatable foods that are just blitzing your system, every taste bud, high salt, high sugar, high fat to the point where it's just, and let's assume delicious. I don't generally like those kinds of foods, but, and then all of a sudden it's like, here's a bowl of rice or a, or a salad. It's going to taste like garbage to you because you're at first anyway. That's right? got to, that's also got to be sort of trickling over to just social media in general and, and the dopamine release in response to that versus say, for example, a real life conversation. Right. Well, and if you're on social media and you're scrolling and you don't even know why you're scrolling. Like you don't even know what you're looking for, your dopamine system has been tapped out and you need to take a break from it. Maybe a couple hours, maybe a couple of days. I think social media is great. I teach science on social media. I see you all the time on social media. You know, we, there's a lot of great social interaction. There's a lot of opportunity to learn and see things. Some are funny, some are interesting, some are disturbing. But when you're at the point where you're engaging in something and you don't even know what the win is, but you find yourself reflexively engaging in it, your dopamine system is now plummeting. And that's a serious issue. So the other thing is that a picture is worth a thousand words and a movie is worth a thousand pictures. Our, our visual system is so tuned to watch motion and to see movies. So you're seeing movie after movie after movie after movie. What's happening is the context is switching constantly. Our, the human brain has never been confronted with context switching at this rate. You, you know, a television kit, you know, went from you know, six channels to 12 to 200, but this is the first time that you can walk around with your television. You can have it in your car. You can have it on the phone, oh, excuse me, on the plane. So I use social media and the internet a lot. Um, unlike email or reading an article online, social media is, you know, you can scroll through a thousand different or a hundred different contexts within five minutes. And that's a big override for the brain. And then the rest of the world seems kind of boring. Like, you know, you see people at dinner scrolling their phone. It's because actually, the brain wants novelty. It's seeking novelty all the time. These days I'm, I'm turning off my phone in the evenings. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm on there a little bit, but I'm finding I'm kind of sick of the phone. And I think a lot of people are kind of hitting this point where they're like, ah, I'll get on social media for an hour or two a day, but this is getting a little pointless. 